We have found our way to Justy's Hovel in the Forsaken Airfield, and at my current confidence level, we might just have some map making to do this episode. Hello, where's the door? Also, hello Legion, this is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. I'm stuck in a cabin. What's going on? There we go. Let's play some more of the Long Dark in our Against All Odds series. I'm going to step outside and see if I can do some of that map making right now. Because it's not actually that dark yet. Oh, you hear that? You hear that? We might actually have an Aurora on our hands. Okay, let me... First of all... We're going to survey the local area and see what we can get away with. Oh, wow. Okay, so... Not really a lot of visibility from here. If I... Hang on. If I step over to the edge here, I need to be mindful of the fact that there's potentially an aurora starting, and so the animals might already be aurorified. But if I can step up to the edge and see out over a farther distance, the elevation should reveal more of the map. That was added several patches ago now. It's been a feature in the game for a long time. Yeah, we definitely have an aurora here, which is interesting. It makes me wonder if... Hang on. Okay. No other caches at present. At least not in the immediate area. Oh, check that out. A couple of maple saplings. Alright, so the airfield's gonna be down there. Yep. Okay, so I want to be careful not to step out too far here, but I should get really, really good. Yeah, so there's the lake over there. That's not as good as I thought it would be. Okay. Back to the hobble. Fast as possible. Well, might as well chop these up while I'm here. And now I'm just going to try and get some rest for the night. And honestly, what I'm going to do as I make my way back to this hobble is I'm going to, like, sprint. I'm going to burn some calories, burn some energy. Try and get myself ready to sleep for as long as I can. So we encountered a moose close to here during the last episode. It's not really clear where I am relative to the cave I found, but I I have the suspicion that I'm directly above it. So we're actually pretty high up on the edges of this zone. Sadly, there were no cattails in this pond, but I still have 30 plus cattails, so it's fine. Hang on, let me just double check and make sure there are no signals coming from this thing. No. Not that I can tell. Although it might be... Hello, bunny. It might be that it, it's like too early in the night. I'm not going to worry about it right now, though. My primary concern at the moment is just getting some sleep. Recovering some health. As much as I would like to drink some tea, I'm not even going to worry about that right now. I'm just going to sleep for five hours. Okay, so now you hear the that buzzing in the background. That's what makes me feel like maybe... Aw, look at the lights. That's cool. There might still be more here. I can turn the radio on. I want to make sure I fully search this cabin. I kind of found it right at the end of the last episode, but let me see if anything at all. No, nothing at the moment. It might require a certain proximity to a cache before it actually lets me know that it's detecting something. So just because I'm not finding something now doesn't mean there's nothing left. It could mean that, but don't... Nobody tell me in the comments. Like, I'll figure it out. It's fine. It seems like right now, there is more to be found. Like, there's there's more, like, to be done in terms of repairing the towers. That's the main objective of Signal Void, is you have to repair the towers. And then, I think, if memory serves... I didn't check the mechanics in between episodes, uh, two episodes ago, like I said I would, because um, I didn't feel I needed to. I thought, after I thought about it, I was like, this is what I'm thinking as far as, like, how it works. 
I think it's right. So I'm pretty confident. I'm reasonably confident <laughs> that I won't have to actually look up the mechanics. I think you have to repair all the towers and then that other scanning mode kind of comes to life and becomes relevant. So, gives us a reason to go back in to the previously explored zones and get some stuff done. Okay, so at this point, let me just pass time for three hours. I do have passive health recovery. Okay, there goes the Aurora. You know what? Screw it. Let me just pass time for three more, and then I'm going to sleep for as long as I can. Because I don't want to necessarily leave here first thing in the morning. It's going to be too cold. So even though the sun's starting to come up now, like I'd rather sleep a bit longer, drink a little bit more water, reduce my encumbrance. Honestly, why am I so encumbered? What am I carrying at this point? Maybe it's the coal? It might also be the books. Because it's not just the water. Oh yeah, I also picked up this worn windbreaker. Tell you what, let's go ahead and harvest that. It's going to take 20 minutes and it's going to give me two cloth. That's one of the things. I think it's the books primarily. Water too. Water's not nothing. Yeah. And I maybe have... Yeah, I have more torches than I need. I can harvest some of the lower quality ones. But then I'm just going to sleep. For copious amounts of time. Alright, harvest two more. And we'll let that be the end of it. No, I didn't. I didn't want to use it. I wanted to harvest it. There we go. <laughs> okay. Magic. Now I just need to sleep for... It's only going to let me get about three hours of sleep, unfortunately. But that'll put me later in the day. And the weather doesn't sound too god-awful at the moment. Alright, so let's do one more sweep of this particular cabin. I would really hate to overlook anything obvious here. I'm going to go ahead and light my lantern just to really illuminate all the corners. Make sure I'm not missing anything, for example, on the mantle. On the fireplace on either side. No. Alright, I'm pretty confident that I've explored this whole thing. There is, of course, the cloth. And there's nothing up higher. So, let's see how things are outside. Oh, lovely. Exactly what I didn't want to see. Alright, great. Hang on. You know what, before I stand out here for too long, because it is actually quite cold, it's negative 20 at the moment, let me step back inside, where it's thankfully warm enough, despite there being no fire of any kind. Yeah, nobody asked questions. That's a lot of oats. That's I can make oatmeal again, officially, now that I have that. That's pretty nice. Oh, it's the freaking saplings. That's what it is. Hold on. Should I just go ahead and drop those here, you think? Or should I bring them back to the airfield? Maybe I can bring them back to the airfield. Can I afford to walk around this encumbered? Is the question. Maybe I can. How is my rabbit skin stuff? It doesn't need... It's not worth using up a rabbit skin yet. I can drop the fire starting book. I can drink some water. I think I'm going to bring the saplings with me. I don't think it really makes sense to leave them here. When am I going to come all the way back up here? Also, what I mainly came in here to do was consume cattails, so let's do that. Let me sort A to Z so that things don't change position as I eat them, so I can just do this. Definitely one of those times where it makes you wish that you could just tell the game, hey, consume X of this item. <laughs> but I think that's... I've talked about that before. I think it's kind of contrary in some ways to... Like the nuances of the game's survival mechanics and design.
For those who haven't heard the story, I asked Raphael about it once, and he said, yeah, we'll add that when we add Doritos to the game. <laughs> or something like that. Um, it was an it was an open tweet, and that was just his response. And so what I took from that was, like, food is precious in the long dark. And the moment you sort of um, add a feature that allows you to consume multiple, you know, items of a given type, it affects that feeling of, like, how precious it is every single time you hit the eat button, and I think that matters to the developers of the game, to the designers of the game, and I can respect that kind of point of view. I don't know that I necessarily fully agree with it, but I can see why they would want to protect that aspect of the gameplay. Okay, so this is less than ideal. I'm, I'm setting out... It's getting colder, and I'm starting to see wind. So I could... I really hate this, because I don't... I don't want to spend too long this episode just lingering in this area. But... I could very well find myself here, um... Just kind of doubling back to that hovel. Unfortunately. Alright, so the lake is in that general direction. And the airfield's in that general direction. I don't know that I'm going to find anything at the lake. But I also know that I'm closer to the lake. I don't know. Part of me wants to stay up here, man. Like, so you know what? Screw it. Screw it. It's like, it's either turn back and... Look, here's the thing. <laughs> I've got a choice. It's either... As I hit my freaking mic stand. I'm literally gesturing with my hands like you can see me. I can't. But anyway. um, It's either going all the way back to the airfield. You know? And going somewhere that you've already seen to wait out the storm, or staying at this location to wait out the storm, and then being closer to the areas that I haven't been before. And I think I'd rather just, if I know that there's a cabin right behind me, I would rather just double back and use it for shelter, if there's going to be a blizzard, which I feel like the game is, is threatening one at the moment, so... Let me just go back to that hovel. Because there's no point starting a fire right now if the weather's going to turn to crap. No point at all. Remember, we do have some deer skin that is uh, curing down at the hangar. So the more time we spend exploring, the more of that kind of timer we will tick away. That's quite nice. Yeah, I hate to feel stuck, but basically it's like you're choosing where you want to be stuck, and I'd rather be stuck in a newer place. So let's come inside. And also, I think it would have taken longer to get back to the airfield. I would have lost more life just now, so there's that too. We're going to get a couple hours rest. Should recover the condition that I just lost. Again, I really want to be mindful of that concept of attrition. All right. No blizzard sounds, so it might have improved. Let's see. It did improve. It's still obnoxiously cold, but we no longer have blizzards. Like, like we, have, we no longer have the imminent threat of a blizzard, so I would be more confident starting a fire out in the world right now. So let's go. I'm going to grab sticks when I see them, because I might need them. I do still have plenty of coal. And frankly, using some of that coal right now would be... beneficial in more than one way. It would give me the heat that I need from the fire. Oh, what's up here? It would give me the heat that I need from the fire, but it would also... Um... Yeah, I feel like there's something hidden back here. It would also use up some of the stuff that's encumbering me. Because coal is, unfortunately, quite heavy. Lugging that around is not an easy thing in the long dark. Okay, so this might be something. Might be nothing.
Wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is this... This is where I came before. Yeah. I started a fire up there before. Okay. Good to know. So, apparently, I just, like... When I came up here, all I needed to do was look back to the right, and I would have seen that cabin. I might have even seen it out of the corner of my eye. Well, not seen it, but some of you might have when I came up here. I might have just looked... Like, my eyes might have been focused more left than they were right. That's interesting. Okay. I can't feel my hands. I know. We're gonna fix that. Alright, so there's the lake. Plain as day. And lots still to explore. Look at the size of this zone! Look at this. None of that is like... Well, I mean, once you get up the rocks, you... You know, there's, there's aspects that are not reachable. But all of that is like... That's traversable. Like, this, that's part of this zone. Good God. It's insane. It's an absolutely massive zone. Okay, I am officially cold. I've never felt so cold in my life. Alright, so the moose was down there. I know that. And... There's some rocks down here that might help provide shelter from wind, so I'm going to try and make it to this formation before I start a fire. I'm kind of hoping that, like, there's, like, a cave up here to the right, but that's really, really wishful thinking, if I'm being completely honest. Is that a wolf? No, it's not. Huh. Okay, hang on. This is not a cave... But it is kind of an indent in the rock. I don't know if it's enough of one, though. It's not going to be that different from just huddling to... Oh, wait, hang on, hang on. Oh, yep, 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 yep. Hello, hello. Come to Hadrian. Perfect. Very... Very low area. Let's go ahead and use that book, because it's taking up weight. Alright, so that's a gift. It's not quite a cave, but it's a pit. In pits. On, fire. Jennifer, you, you don't need to yell at the fires this much anymore. You really don't. It's not necessary. Okay, so this should get us more than warm enough. Alright, nowhere. Oh, hello. Alright, so I can get a little bit of sleep by this very, very nicely placed fire. Look at this. Check this out. This is like down here in this pit. The wind is never going to blow this out. This is a really nice fire location when you're up here in the very, like, like farther reaches of the Forsaken Airfield. I like this. I'm honestly... Legion, I'm liking this zone. This is... Maybe it's just the feeling of being in a new place again in the long dark that I love. But I'm liking this zone. Okay, so now I'm definitely warm enough. Still have 3 hours 24 minutes on the fire. Um, I'm tempted to drink a coffee, but I'm not going to. I'm going to grab a couple of torches off this fire. See if we can get one that's closer to 50%. Okay, at this point, this is kind of a waste. Okay, that's definitely a waste. Come on, game. Just give me give me one one good torch. Fine, fine. I'll use the crappy one. It's fine. Enough of that. <laughs> okay. There's the moose. Or maybe that's just a deer. That's just a deer. Okay. I was about to say, why is the moose there? That would be weird. All right, we're going to keep going this way. I see water back there. I'm kind of... Is that a cabin? No, I think that's a rock. Okay, so I'm kind of tempted to stay up along the rock face here. So that's what I'm going to do. Especially if it kind of protects me from the wind a little bit while I do this. And maybe even helps me spot for where the caves are in the zone. And the other little secrets, like what I just found. Did I pick up my freaking... Yes, I did. 
again, I wouldn't be surprised if we did like a an analysis, if we collected data on all the times I've asked that question, right? And like you like kind of did a scale for like on a scale of one to five, how stressed am I based on like being in an unfamiliar location? Like the times where I ask that question frequently versus the times where I don't. I think there'd be a pretty strong correlation between the stress level and the frequency with which I check my bedroll. <laughs> the frequency, or it's not even checking my bedroll, it's doubting my bedroll, you know? The frequency with which I ask that question. It's so funny. I see some reishi mushrooms there, that's handy. I'm going to try and keep this torch out because it is helping me stay warm a little bit. Not a lot, but a little. I'm just also trying to be mindful of predators. Okay. So, this seems like it might go somewhere here. Alright, so I'm going to come back down for those reishi mushrooms. I'm, I want to head up here first and see what we can find. Yeah, see, this path up here seems potentially to go somewhere, maybe, maybe not. Uh, I don't know, suddenly I'm not feeling it. Suddenly I feel like I'm just exploring a more cosmetic area, but... Oh wait, no. Hold on. No, this isn't really going anywhere I haven't already been. Okay, yeah, it's just backtracking. It's just a high ridge. Worth checking. I'm not I'm not mad that I checked, but it's it doesn't appear to be anything meaningful. What was that? It might have been it might have been ptarmigan. We we are fairly high and ptarmigan tend to show up at higher altitudes. So maybe that's what it was. Maybe it was, like, maybe that area that I was just exploring was, like, leading to a ptarmigan spot. That's one of the higher reishi mushroom spawns I've ever seen. Lake is off to the left. I think I see... There's the plane crash in the middle of the lake. I don't know if you can see it through the trees there. There it is. So I was there. And this is a slightly higher pond. Also, hang on. I see something up here. I love this so much. <laughs> the game's also been pretty nice to me for a bit here, so I need to be... Be careful how comfortable I get. Because I think there's a very real possibility. There's a very, very real possibility, in fact, that um, the Glimmer Fog could roll in any second, and I could be... I, I kind of know where I am, to be honest, but that doesn't mean I'm just going to treat everything like it's, like it's okay. Okay, so here's another kind of pit in the snow. That's where you could potentially have a safe fire. starting to get cold again, and it is towards the end of the day. Let's drink some water to relieve some of my encumbrance. Still have plenty of food. So that's nice. Ooh, helicopter crash. Okay. That's unexpected, but I'll take it. Freezing. Okay, I don't see or hear any bears, um, or 
wolves for that matter. I don't know why I'm thinking bear, but we are kind of in a more remote zone, so I'm like... My brain is honestly thinking in terms of not walking up on a bear right now. Maybe I do need to shut up and listen for bear crows. But I want to check for cattails here. Mm, I think I might see some on the far side of the pond there. Nope. All right. Don't want to waste too much time because I am getting cold. But before I do too much more, given that we have such good visibility, I want to keep moving this way so I can try and spot for actual shelter. I don't know if it exists. At the very least, I think I'm in an area right now where I'm, like, able to start fires and kind of huddle in corners like you've seen me do a few times. Ambient noise is making me a little nervous. So this is not a crashed helicopter. Well, it is a crashed helicopter, but, like, I can get inside it. And the skids are still active. Or the skids are still intact, is what I meant to say. Alright, so let's get inside here. You can get inside, but it's not warm enough, unfortunately. Yeah, so this is not good, and I'm going to lose my torch here. Damn. Alright, I need to get inside. Okay, need to find a cave, like, pretty much in the immediate area. Let me check the cockpit real quick. Not really seeing anything here. Alright, get out. Out, out, out. Okay. Need to find a cave. Need to find a cave yesterday. Honestly, <laughs> can I just, like, make a fire right here and warm up for a bit? I think I might. Would that be the dumbest thing to do? It could be pretty dumb, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I feel like... I don't know that I necessarily have a lot of time to wander around and lose more health. Come on, little fire. Again, there's the problem of attrition, which I'm trying to avoid, but I'm still running into it a little bit. So that's every stick that I have, plus one piece of coal. Can I prepare some reishi? Yes, I can. Let's go ahead and do that. So some reishi tea will help me warm up. And get me through the last bit of this day, assuming that I can find shelter elsewhere. So let's drink that, and I am going to take a moment. I know it didn't do anything. <laughs> I know, game. I know. Let's take a moment to chow down on some of the stuff I'm carrying. I am less encumbered now, which is nice. Mainly due to offloading the sticks and the coal. But also it's getting colder, so the fire might not be quite... Uh, it's actually pretty warm, all considered. That's nice. I'm officially carrying too many torches, and I don't care, so let's sort by condition. Drop these. I know, I know, I'm giving up torches. Oh, actually, let's drop that one, too. And that one. Alright, maybe I can get a nice one. Nice! Okay. That is better. Alright, let's keep looking. I still have visibility at the moment. I want to try to take advantage of it while I'm somewhat able to do so. Fingers crossed. Also, I'm liking the fact that I'm kind of on a high ridge at the moment, because if I don't lose visibility in the next few seconds, which is possible, if the glimmer fog decides to be an absolute troll, I might be able to see some stuff as I come over this ridge. At the very least, I can identify some threats. But maybe also... Oh, hello? What's this? Oh, that's a rock. I might be able to identify some... Man, I see so much brown 
on the rocks, and I keep thinking, Cadden? Cadden? But it's just these newer, browner rocks that have been part of the Long Dark's environmental design for a few years now. Okay, so that wasn't as much of a ridge as I'd hoped for. It was really kind of looking like a cliff. And I was thinking that that's what it was. Not really. Really need to keep my head on the swivel right now, so... Sorry for the camera movement, but... I'm kind of needing to have 180 degrees. I can always increase my field of view, I suppose. That'd be one way to fix the problem. But there aren't that many zones in the long dark that make you feel like you need this field of view. That's what's so different about the Forsaken Airfield. You really have to, like, look around a lot. Okay, I'm seeing... Okay, I see a tree over there. I feel like I'm about to find something. I just don't... I don't know what. Also, I, there's a part of me that wants to go back to the rock wall back there. But there's... This is such an interesting little area where I see these piles of rocks and... and trees potentially pointing to places, and I want to see where they're pointing. This is such a distinct area compared to where I've been exploring for the past little bit. Also, nice sunset. You can certainly enjoy that for a moment. I'm going to walk to this edge here and see if I spot anything. Yeah, I keep seeing shapes and going like, oh, look, it's a cabin. No, just kidding. That's just... Oh, okay, I see a fishing hut. That's... That's not nothing. That's not nothing. That's a fishing hut. Um, what's back here, though? What's at this waterfall? Hang on. Maybe if I come back here, I'll have a little bit of a higher vantage point. Yeah. Hang on. Ah, oh, damn. Just lost it. Hate to use a match, but there it is. Wow. Beautiful waterfalls back here in the back of the zone. It's not super obvious that there's any threat from wildlife, but I want to know what's back here. So I'm going to... There's lots of blind corners, which is making me nervous, but I'm also seeing a river again. Oh my god, Jesus dear. Well, that confirms that the Hadrian shakes still happen with my new mouse. <laughs> We've been waiting for confirmation on that for like three weeks since I got the new mouse. That confirms it. Still a thing. Wasn't due to like the programming or the acceleration of the other mouse. Just due to me being jumpy when I caught off guard. Oh, it's been a while since we've had a good one too, so there you go. <laughs> oh no. I'm not going to hear the end of that one for a while. Just a deer minding his own business. And I'm freaking the hell out over here. Alright. I'm gonna try and double back. I don't see a cave of any kind. Although, maybe there is one? Hang on. I would hate to go all the way down here and it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Let me double back. Visibility is still good. I'm I'm working on it. Working on it, Jennifer. Give me a second. All right. At this point, I'm out of decent torches, so it's gonna be pretty rapid chaining here. All right. Let me not jump scare when I see the deer again, because the deer's right here. Thank God they can't attack. You know? Can we just take a moment to appreciate that? Alright, there's another waterfall there. Oh, wait. There's another waterfall there. How am I getting down from here? Hold on. Crap. I might have to go up here and go across, maybe? 
Oh, temperature situation is not great, and it's going to be getting worse. Also, light is not great. I don't love this. I don't love this. I don't love this. I don't love this at all. Uh, are those rose hips? Those are rose hips. I could potentially make tea, given that I just found two other bushes of rose hips. So, let's. I'm freezing. I know. I'm working on it. Stick. Steak. 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 It's dusk, so I can't be far behind. Thank you, genius. That input is so valuable to the present moment. <laughs> Sorry, that was mean. She's just keeping track of the time. She's just making sure I'm aware, which I am. Is there any way across? No, there's not. So I pretty much need to make another fire here and warm up, unfortunately. And it's fine. I totally can. All right, there's a wolf down there. I'm finally noticing wolves. It's been a while since I've seen... It's been a while since I've really felt threatened by a wolf. A surprisingly long time, to be honest. All right, so let's... Go ahead and start that fire, and I hope that wolf doesn't come any closer to me. I might have to run that wolf off when I cross here. Right. I'm not liking the direction I'm seeing the wind blowing. Alright, I'm going to add some sticks, because I really would prefer not to use... There we go. Alright. Let's make rose hips. It's going to be getting colder while I do this. I just would prefer not to use, um... Oh, hello, and there's a bear, too. Glad I noticed that. Alright, so we found all the predators. <laughs> Finally. Oh, the bear's actually coming towards me. That's not good. That's not good. Alright, let me... See if I can sneak around him. Hopefully not walk up on a wolf. This island... Especially seeing that there's a fishing hut there. Like, this island feels promising. Maybe? Oh, more cattails. Heck yes. Gimme, 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 gimme. Get down low to the ground, just in case there's a wolf closer than I would like. Where was he? Oh, he's behind me. Man, that caught me off guard. Alright, so there's... Wolf and bear in close proximity. Hang on. I kind of want to go up here <laughs> away from both of them just for a moment because this is the opposite side of the waterfall and maybe there's shelter up here. Or maybe there's another bear. One of the two. Man. All right. Also starting to get tired, which is not good from a rest standpoint. At least I'm warm enough at present. I'm guessing that this is just a high lookout. And doesn't go anywhere. Yup. That's exactly what it is. Great. Wonderful. Love this. Love it for me. Alright, I'm gonna try and make it down. Oh, damn it, I didn't... That was a totally accidental click, but I guess I did need to chain torches, so I'll do that. Oh, okay. So I hear ptarmigan. That's, that's a ptarmigan area. Interesting. I wonder if they planned that when they made the zone, because there's so many little remote, like... There are so many remote areas up here. Hang on. 
I'll bet you if I go back here, there's a cave. I'd be shocked if there wasn't. But yeah, you know, the Ptarmigan weren't released when Forsaken Airfield came out. So my thinking is, like, when they released the Forsaken Airfield, you know, if they had Ptarmigan planned and they knew that they were going to have them be in more, like, elevated areas, if they went ahead and made areas, they thought out areas in advance where they had a feeling they might plant ptarmigan once they were implemented. That's probably the way it went down. And there's a cave. Perfect. I saw the stalactites. That will give me a stopping point. Yep, 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 yep. Oh boy. Wow. I'm, I'm still not, you know, 100% confident that there's there are no animals up here. Hell, this, this could even be the bear cave. Which... Let's all agree that would be... Alright, I see a rabbit, which is good. But yeah, that would be um, a, a little bit anxiety-inducing. I would, I, would, I would be concerned about that. Mildly concerned. Doesn't seem like the barricade, though. Hi, bunny. And there's even rose hips. I see coal, I see a marine flare. Nice, two more pieces of coal. Ooh, there's even... Really? This will come in handy. You finally give me a Mackinac jacket. <laughs> I don't think a Mackinac jacket at this point would actually be useful. Um, but I think that's the first one I've found for the entire series. That's funny, hang on, let me look around. A Mackinac jacket, wow. That's stunning. All right, now it's more than warm enough back here. What I'm going to go ahead and do as I end this episode is... Let's see. I do need to harvest a few sticks, so let's take care of this so I don't have to do it at the beginning of the next one. I've ruined several torches while walking around here. Ruined, I say. I'm going to trust the cave to keep me warm. And I'm going to get some rest. And I actually think it might work out. I think I might get a decent amount of rest here. Assuming the Glimmer Fog doesn't come in and ruin my day. Which, to be fair, that's a bold assumption to make. So. I'm excited, though. Because the geography in this area of the zone is so distinct. And we're near an area where I see a fishing hut. And, like, what's the likelihood that there's a fishing hut this is my thinking. What's the likelihood there's a fishing hut and not a place of residence nearby? You know? Alright, so let's now sleep for, I'm going to say, nine hours. Recover a ton of condition and hopefully not die. Due to unforeseen coldness of the zone. What was that? That was the game trying to freak me out. All right, health is now much better, and uh, we are more well-rested. We have some water to drink, but um, we're also probably less encumbered. Well, no, we're still just about as encumbered as we have been, but there's a reason for that. I'm lugging stuff around that I wouldn't normally, but uh, we are 43 minutes into this episode. We're about 10 minutes over time, so thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. If you're not new here, look for the join button for access to Channel Unique emotes, badges, and other perks. New episodes drop every day but Wednesday at 1 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, and comments are always welcome, so leave your thoughts below, and I'll see you next time.